uh, activities. But now I, I think there is like um, a break, so to speak, okay, between now the growers and you, the baristas and the CEOs, okay? Because now, even if they get the coffee to you guys, as you were talking about it, uh, you're not using it as much as you were doing before, okay? Which means now there is also a problem on their side. So how has this affected that process? Because we have a tree to cup process, okay? How has the lockdown affected that process? You see, Emma, it's funny how you allow something to go on yeah. that's private sector is not yet um, fully utilized because not everybody can be employed by government mm. uh, and we are looking at uh, a future whereby uh, more people are employed in the private sector mm. than in government so um, I think if we all work hard if we all work together yeah. and uh, invest in the right areas yeah. There's been a lot of talk about uh, value addition yeah. in the agriculture sector, yes. in the mineral sector. If there is enough investment in those areas, mm -hmm. I think it can create enough jobs for our children and grandchildren. Okay. Yeah. I just want to take you to question number four, Andrew, which is um, let's talk about your journey at uh, City Hall and the foray into the executive director's office, which is uh, uh, as Andrew uh, Chitaka. Very interesting. And as well as the director engineering. Very interesting. I joined KCCA in, uh, on 1st November 2011. Yeah. And before then, I was. for so much yes ceo of you know whatever yes. they, they give so much this is the reason why you are actually on the bench because of my credibility <laughs> thank you so much but now yeah. they attack you they yeah. verify you yeah. and the goal yes is to weaken you financially yes is to weaken your yes. your owner yes these are slanderers yeah so i'm glad that someone would stay up at night yes to ask and learn about me yeah and I pray that uh, in the next two months, because I know many Ugandans who travel overseas, yes. Yes. Yeah. when they go there, yeah. they, one of the things, because the media has been so much, and yes. Sam Kutesa, yeah. the Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs, yeah. has really not done a good job. He has dropped the ball on this issue. Yeah. Why? Mm. So many of us are being accused of being gay killers, including me. You've just had that person. Yeah. Uganda is being accused that we kill gays, which actually is absolutely untrue. Yeah. And because of this, it has affected our tourism, it affects people who go overseas to do work or study, mm -hmm. it affects uh, whenever you go to a conference, hi, my name is Eddie O'Killer, where are you from? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm from Uganda. Mm -hmm. Oh, you are the gay killers. <laughs> and then you begin to describe it. So one of the things that I've done is yeah. I've written a book, yeah. which should be coming out. Um, I'm, I know that the, I keep saying the same thing, but the work of doing a book takes a long time, and I wish I could be supported. Yeah. You know, many people who write on this subject, yes. like Sylvia Tamale, yes. she's supported by the Rockefeller Foundation, yes. Carnegie Foundation, yes. there is money!
Tesla is a very big brand and um, as we go on we will probably discuss the things we're trying to do to see that things change for good. the better good Sean on the CEO bench for everyone who is following we're live on our YouTube studio where we actually stream from so YouTube studio for everybody asking for a link is actually house of talent you confident in themselves and what they are offering yes. I think that's the biggest problem like women will easily settle for a less pay than men would okay yeah uh, Mona on your internet it goes on to say uh, well, I think this is a comment. Says, I didn't know that beauty products are taxed at 60%. Whoa. They are. I pray that changes soon, but they are. Okay. So, yeah. with that challenge of 60%. Mm -hmm. Setting up the company, you're doing tours all across the world. Um, you know, a personal account is great, but how these things are taxed becomes important yeah. for for you know for your business later on yeah. as soon as you cross that uh, cross that threshold of 50 million a year you know <laughs> you're, 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 you're now in the a, interest become yeah, more uh -huh. share yes yeah. 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 Very good afternoon, very good morning, depending on where you're watching from in the world. Welcome to House of Talent Television. My name is Atengi Manuel and this is the Coffee Break. Remember, you can catch us on House of Talent Television on all social media. You can catch us on House of Talent Television live on YouTube, on Twitter and on Facebook. Welcome to the Coffee Break. And in the studio with me today is a man we like to call the Coffee Messiah. <laughs> I know it's a name that he doesn't like, but he's a Coffee Messiah, Mr. Amon Mukisa. Welcome back to the show. It's been a very long time yeah, since I last spoke to you and saw you. Yeah, How have you been? How have you been in the lockdown? What has been happening? Are there new? You might have gotten married and we don't know about <laughs> it. <laughs> the lockdown has come with a lot of things, yeah. a lot of innovations, a lot of uh, 
thinking yeah. how you get out of it. But um, anyway, I'm happy to be here and always glad to be on the show. Though, hmm. it's always a hard spot to be sitting in this <laughs> seat. Yeah? <laughs> well, I guess you're in the right place for now. I'm sure, but when it's coffee, I'm always in the right place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you can catch us on uh, YouTube, uh, Facebook, like I said, and Twitter. Send us your comments, uh, anything you want to ask us. Now remember, this is the coffee break where we, go to, we get to talk everything about coffee. Now, I mean, I know that the lockdown has been on since uh, 2020. We had the first lockdown and that was a really long lockdown. Then we had the second one and now the third one that is about to end. I think it's just a week for it to go. And I know that in all this time, uh, you as a barrister, okay, have been having some issues uh, where I think now you don't go to work every day. You go to work once in a while. Yeah. And this has had an effect on you, okay? It could be positive, it could be a negative effect, okay? So how has the lockdown affected you in relation to, you know, being a barrister, in relation to your finances, and in any other aspect? Well, Emma, to be honest, uh, I've been reading about this whole thing of over 21 million people who grow farms, who grow coffee yeah. on a small scale, they provide over 8% of the world's coffee. So I'm trying to imagine this number of people who are producing now this coffee to me to brew it. Mm. And now they can't be able to bring it because they know when they bring it, it will be just that well in my coffee shop. Yeah. So as a barrister, I'm having a challenge of putting out this coffee, you know, because I have farmers who send coffee to our coffee shops because they expect us to brew this coffee because they think people are taking coffee. Yes, yeah. the reality people are taking coffee, but not as much as they used to take coffee before the lockdown. Yeah. And in the first lockdown, it was a bit okay. You mm -hmm. know, people thought that they would go back to work and they used to spend more of their money. But when this second lockdown came into Uganda, yeah. the 42 days, man, it's been crazy because most of people have spent their money uh, like crazy. Yeah. And now they imagine buying coffee. Uh, at 20k or 30k a bag of coffee yeah. which is going to last maybe like for uh, a week which means you're going to spend over 60k in two weeks and that's a lot yeah, that's in, a Ugandan, mm. in Ugandan money mm. and especially these days we've been having a conversation of uh, someone saying that uh, uh, people is for the rich but the fact is coffee is not only for the rich there's someone who needs coffee like every day but they don't have that kind of money to buy that coffee yeah. but a rich person has the ability to get that coffee from wherever he wants. He can, he can order for coffee by, by maybe Express, uh, uh, Alibaba, you know, mm. as long as he needs that coffee, good coffee for him because he's able to, uh, to get what he needs. But this one person mm. who is not able to get that cup of coffee, which, has been, which he or she has been getting on 7K or 80K a day, and you're telling them to buy maybe uh, two bags of coffee in two weeks yeah. that's hard on me as a person also because yeah. now i'm getting to lose these clients yeah. who are getting their coffees uh to be made at home you know google has had a spike in people who are searching for like uh how to make a perfect cup of coffee at home how do i make coffee at home like there are a lot of uh search uh engines that are showing that like google when you go into google and you type in how to make coffee yeah it will bring a lot of articles, which means people are drinking coffee in their homes. Mm. But the real question is, are they drinking the good quality cup of coffee they have been taking in coffee shops and are they going to miss it? Yeah. Well, I like how you took us all the way down to the farmers, people who actually grow the coffee. Okay. Now, we need to understand that the lockdown affected even those people. Mm. Okay. But it didn't affect them as much as, uh, let's say, the barristers or the CEOs okay uh, farming was allowed to continue mm. okay mm. and i believe that the coffee farmers continued with their uh, activities but now i i think there is like um a break so to speak okay uh, between now the growers and you the baristas and the ceos okay because now even if they get the coffee to you guys as you were talking about it mm. uh, you're not using it as much as you were doing before okay which means now there is also a problem on their side. So how has this affected that process? Because we have a tree to cup process, mm -hmm. okay? How has the lockdown affected that process? You see, Emma, it's funny how you allow something to go on, yeah. that's farming to go on, mm -hmm. but 
you're putting a stampede on where that uh, result of farming is going to go. Like, you've allowed farmers to keep growing coffee or to keep doing farming. Yeah. And you're putting a stampede on the coffee business. We're talking about coffee roasters, we're talking about uh, coffee shops, we're talking about uh, coffee exporters. Yeah. Because you want me to come and buy that coffee, or you want this person who's um, dealing in the coffee business to come and get his coffee, to use it, whatever he wants to use it. To speak about, as a barista, I've been affected in a way that, first of all, I've uh, lost my touch or uh, my experience with my favorite clients. You know, they just give you a call, uh, you know what I want? I want to make this and this and this, but how do best should I make it? Hmm. Yes, you're going to explain to them, but man, there's that experience when you, just like the owner I'm having this chat with you, yeah. that's an enormous experience. So I'm losing that. And secondly, um, but, you know, when, when people are very many in coffee shops, because there are these people who wake up early in the morning and come to coffee shops, have their cup of coffee, if they have a lot of work, sit down on a table, have their coffee as they're doing a lot of uh, their, they their work. work on a laptop yeah. or a, a, mon, um, a gadget, whatever they're using. And it keeps you engaged in this coffee shop. Yeah. It broadens your mind, you know? Like you're seeing a certain uh, mukasa out there is seated on that table, is having their cup of coffee, he's busy thinking, you know? Mm. And as I'm looking at them, I'm like, what's this guy thinking? Now it's already broken in my mind. So I'm also losing that as a barista. But also to mention um, on the coffee side or the business side as a coffee shop, yeah. we've lost uh, the income, talking about sales. Because now if, you have, if you've been having like over maybe 3,000 clients, I mean 300 clients coming over a day, and now you have less than 100 clients coming in, in coffee shops, yeah. even including the, the takeaway guys, you mm -hmm. know, like, uh, we've had very many uh, food deliveries uh, uh, companies come up. We're talking about Jumia, Glovo, Kampala Eats. A lot of them now are in Uganda. But now, if if you're ordering, if you're having very many uh, clients, actually not very many, few clients ordering online, hmm. eh? it means part of your sales are decreasing, and also they don't trust what you're going to give them because what they say on the internet and that's now the thing they uh that's most difficult in these days people or coffee shops uh i won't mention names <laughs> they're putting these products online yeah. you know but they put their clear images big in size big in quantity you know but on delivery it's a totally different totally different from what they, 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 they have shown us online. So clients are, lo are losing like interest and, and, and uh, the expectations of what they're supposed to get yeah. is not there, which has totally given us a different experience in the uh, coffee shop business. Okay, yeah, um, I like how you put that. Now, before we get into a break, mm. um, I just want to ask you, Uganda is behind in the coffee culture. Mm. Okay, and the coffee culture has just been growing for not a very long time. Yeah. Okay, I was on the internet and checking out uh, some pictures of coffee shops around the world and they are totally empty. Mm -hmm. Places where you'd have, you know, it filled with people, yeah. there are now one or two people. And I think in Uganda we are facing the same thing. Well, we'll take a break and when we come back from that, we'll talk about the coffee culture and how it's being affected by that. This is House of Talent Television. This is The Coffee Break with me, Atengi Manuel, and Amon Mukisa in the studio. We'll be right back after this.
Welcome back to House of Talent Television. This is the Coffee Break with me, Atengi Manuel. And in the studio is Mr. Amon Mukisa, a.k.a. the Coffee Messiah. How you, you give me that name? Like? <laughs> <laughs> I always I like, yeah. like the smile on your face when, it, when we say Coffee Messiah. Yeah? You know, because someone said that you're trying to get converts. You're trying to get people who take tea hey. and bring them into people who take coffee. So that's yeah. why I'm calling a Coffee yes, Messiah. Yes, the Coffee Messiah. I just confirm the name of Amon with me over Mr. Amon. Yeah, yeah but it, it's things that stick. Well, after, uh, before we went for the break, uh, mm. we were talking about basically yeah. the coffee culture in Uganda. So the coffee culture in Uganda is not really full grown like it is in other parts of the world. Like I was telling you before, I was seeing uh, videos and pictures on the internet mm -hmm. uh, where places like Italy, places like New York, you know, which are very famous for coffee, the coffee shops were empty. Okay. And I think it's almost the same thing here where I think I went to Enduro one day and there was like one or two people. Yeah. And how is this really affecting the coffee culture in Uganda, seeing that it had started to grow, but now it's like if you have a baby who has started to grow, then you stunt their growth, okay? There's always a problem there. So how has the lockdown affected the growth of the coffee culture in Uganda? Well, here's the challenge. We've been trying to get people to consume more coffee yeah. in Uganda. Mm. And now the pandemic comes in, which has brought money other things together like to devolve more cultures in consuming these these beverages of coffee now that's where we're picking a culture of technology which we're having maybe delivery companies uh banks getting too touch with these delivery companies to make sure that they sort out the payment methods that's also now one culture but also the culture of uh, taking good coffee like people have been trying to uh, start taking that apple good coffee, the specialty kind of coffee. But now, these days, people now are getting back to taking bad coffee because they're making their coffee at home. Yeah. I have a friend called Justice. Hmm. Uh, he said he's been making coffee, he's been trying to make coffee for four years. <laughs> Not until last weekend when he made a good cup of coffee and he's like, oh guys, you know what? Now I've graduated for four years, I've been trying to get this cup of coffee, making, like making it at home, yeah. and now I have it. You can imagine now how many people are going through that whole process of getting to learn how to make coffee. That's why I said at the beginning of the show that many people are trying to search how can I make the best coffee because they've been having these good coffees in, in, in these coffee shops. Yeah. That person who used to go in, who was loyal to your favorite, uh, who was loyal to that uh, specialty coffee shop, no longer goes there and now has started, he has started going through these other spe uh, coffee shops which are not even doing a specialty coffee. And believe me, they can't appreciate that because if you have had something good, yeah. you, can, you can't appreciate something that's not good. You keep on saying, I need this, you know, True. I need my mocha, I yeah. need my primula pour over. Yeah. But when you go to a coffee shop, uh, which is not a specialty coffee shop, and they give you a primula pour over, and you're like, what am I taking? <laughs> am I even having coffee? You know, so those are the things that are affecting our coffee culture here because we've really, really tried to build our coffee culture because now just imagine someone at least has been able to spend maybe 50k a week yeah. on their coffee because if 50k a week, that's maybe 10k mm. per day if he's buying a cup of coffee. Now these days, he's gone back to spending maybe 20k. Yeah. So you see how we're trying to... Uh, fail in building our coffee culture yeah. by the fact that this person now is not able to spend which will be able to help me as a barrister in terms of maybe myself because the more cups I sell the, the more sales we make got, yeah. and now I have the ground to make what uh, I, I request maybe my salary to be increased mm. now which means I don't have any ground also that's the part of the culture but also speaking about the employment bit yeah uh, many coffee shops have you find in a coffee shop maybe a day it has over eight or ten employees. You've included the servers, you've included the barristers, mm. you've included the managers and the shift leaders. Yeah. And now you, for the fact you find the coffee shop having maybe maybe three employees, so you see how the rate of unemployment is coming in. And after lockdown, we're totally going to have a challenge in building employment uh, opportunities for these people because coffee shops won't have jobs for these people just imagine now you are, you've been making maybe uh, around 10 million a day and now you're making 1 million a day for the sales bid 
this person, this owner of the coffee shop won't be able to maintain the 30 employees he's been having, which means he will have to cut the levels. So the culture of coffee has been hit so bad, yeah. which we've been trying to build. Yeah. yeah. Um, Talking about em unemployment, mm. okay, I believe that any other sector really is going to be faced with a lot of unemployment yeah. and the coffee industry mm. itself is also going to be affected. Mm. Okay, like you said, you have situations whereby on a normal day, mm. you'd have about 10 employees, yeah. you know, depending on the size of the coffee shop. Mm. Okay, now you have two, three employees and those ones are the ones who can actually walk from home mm. to work and yeah. they also have to walk back. Yeah. Okay, now as a CEO, okay, you're not making as much money as you used to, mm. all right? Uh, so basically you have to make cuts here and there. Uh, you have to cut off some people, yeah. okay? Going forward, if you, Amun, were a CEO mm. of, let's say, Amun Mukisa's coffee shop, yeah. I believe that you have that uh, somewhere. Just <laughs> by that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so looking at you as a CEO, mm. you know, going, uh, going forward after the lockdown, mm. okay? What explanation? Okay, and what, um, what, what, what kind of explanation do you give to your employees? Because now you have to let them go and they have nothing else they can really depend on. Mm -hmm. Okay, and are there any strategies that you as a CEO would put in place to ensure that you take care of the ones you're remaining with and also the ones who are being cut off, also taken care of? Well, Emma, for the fact is we are human. Mm. and we are meant to understand some things. Yeah. Because just imagine now you've been an employee in a coffee shop and you can't see that we're making that kind of money that we've been making on a daily. Yeah. So if I come to you and explain to you that you know what I'm on, the fact is our sales are very low. Mm. Mm? I will have to let some few employees go mm -hmm. so that I can maintain my coffee shop because I have to be operating even after the lockdown. Yeah. So this is where uh, your hard working, your skills, your professionalism comes in. Mm. Because now this kind of uh, person or the owner of the business will sit down with his management or board of directors and they will like, okay, we have Amon here, we have Emma here, we have a certain DL there. Yeah. Now between the three, who has been able to stand out in the way they have been working? Mm. In? So when I have more skills with, uh, be, when I have more skills more than you, Emma, which means I'll be considered and you'll be let down because you, when, when I use you, I won't get the sales or I won't make uh, my client who comes in daily, uh, this small, small number of clients who are coming in daily mm. because you have to handle them like an egg. The moment you give them bad service, the moment you give them the bad experience, you won't even have them, yeah. you know? So, which means I have to retain this kind of person yeah. who's giving the A-class experience to a client, mm. you know? So, that's why uh, business people have managers to monitor uh, these kind of people in these cultures because they were able to tell in such uh, times of uh, situations yeah. who is to retain, who is to go. Well, I think it's a tricky situation because mm. imagine I stay far mm. and I can't really walk to work and you stay near the coffee shop and you can walk to work. So you can't really evaluate us because I haven't been to work mm. and you have been to work. So I yeah. think it, it becomes a very tricky situation. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but we'll be discussing more on that when we come back from the break. Remember, this is House of Talent Television, the Coffee Break Show.
Welcome back to the Coffee Break on House of Talent Television. Remember, like I said earlier, you can catch us on our social media handles at House of uh, Talent Television. That's on Facebook, on Twitter, and you can watch us live on YouTube. Remember, you can also drop us a message. You can ask whatever questions you want. You can send, like Mr. Eddie always says, your kisses, your disses to the Coffee Messiah over here. I'll, I'll be glad uh, to let him know what you guys are saying down there in the comment section with that big smile on his face every time we say, Coffee Messiah. I'm on, uh, welcome back to the show. And before we went for the break, mm. yeah, we were basically talking about the coffee culture and how it has been affected by the lockdown. Uh, we looked at how the baristas have been affected. We looked at how the farmers have been affected. And uh, before we went uh, off, we looked at how the CEOs yeah. have been affected. And we're asking the question of uh, what happens when the lockdown is done and there's unemployment. The CEO is put in a position whereby they have to cut off some people. Yeah, and you said now that plays down to how good of an employee you are, yeah. basically how effective you are in the coffee shop. Mm -hmm. But before we went, I was, I was talking about uh, a situation of two people, okay? I stay, let's say I stay somewhere in Nansana and I can't really walk to my work of place. You stay somewhere in Kamocha, which is really five minutes away from you, okay? Now, as a CEO, okay, you're basing it on uh, productivity yeah. and you're basing it on knowledge of the coffee business okay but i haven't been coming to work and you have been coming to work so wouldn't it be an unfair situation to cut me off and leave you as the person who is employed well before i answer that question yeah. i'll be able to first give you this cup of coffee thank you very much so you can have uh, a favorite coffee yeah. called known as a french press mm. which is made here live on the show by yeah. the <laughs> so that's good but to answer your question well as a business person yeah. Oh, as any business person, first of all, they want productivity. Mm. Uh, they want the coffee knowledge or the knowledge of any product they are selling. Yeah. In this time, we are talking about coffee. So, if you don't know about coffee, uh, you, you you're not productive enough. You know, you're not giving my clients the good experience they're supposed to have. Even though, my friend, you're near, and you access for your two legs away from work to work, mm. I won't get you. I'll be able to provide for this person who's coming from Nansana but they are giving me everything that I need to make my business stand out from other businesses. Mm. Because it doesn't make sense to have bad service or have bad coffee in a coffee shop. Mm. Uh, because someone is near compared to having someone who's very far yeah. and I can pro provide for them because at least the government has tried to give us alternatives. Okay, mm. if I have allowed you to work partially, I'll, ab I'll be able to provide you means of getting to your workplace. Mm. Okay, will you able to get a sticker? Yes. Will you able to, pro uh, to provide uh, housing facilities for your employees? Why can't I get a certain uh, place where I'm going to put this employee? Because if I'm paying maybe 200 uh, shillings a room for this employee and it's making me 500 uh, a day, which means I'll be able to pay this guy's month mm. of uh, 200, Rent, but yeah. he's making me 500 a day. So why would you bring in this person who's making you maybe 100 a day and yeah. you're spending 300 a day? Oh. So it doesn't make sense over yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, it's it's always a tight situation. Very because tight. Even, even the person who's in Nansana might be an A-grade employee. So, you know, it puts you mm. in a very tight situation. Yeah, but um, moving away from that, yeah. Um, we, we spoke earlier about how we have now online services that are yeah, actually yeah. delivering uh, food, delivering mm -hmm. coffee, and delivering basically different foodstuffs uh, to people because in the lockdown you really can't move around. So we have Glovo, I think we have Jumia, yeah. we have certain restaurants that mm -hmm. also have their own uh, career services. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we, we, you've been put in a situation whereby people used to come to the coffee shop to enjoy coffee yeah. okay and even those who don't take coffee i believe in coffee shops you have smoothies you have tea you have different kinds of drinks mm -hmm. okay but now i'm seated in my home and i can order this drink okay i can get onto my phone app and tell jumia that i need this from let's say enduro coffee or from a certain coffee shop mm -hmm. okay um isn't this going to create a problem whereby people will not be coming back to the coffee shops anymore because now I can really get it in the comfort of my home. Okay, why should I, you know, walk to the coffee shop? I think that is where lockdown has put us. You, they talk about the new normal. Yeah. So how, are you, how, how, how would you deal with the new normal of people actually getting stuff at home versus them coming back to the coffee shop? Well, 
some weeks back I was having a conversation with my friend Jerry, yeah. he's a good client of mine over there. I was telling me, you guys should start having a conversation mm. of what's the new normal going to be like and how can we adapt to that process because yeah. things are not going to go back the way they were mm. because this pandemic has caused a lot of changes some of them good some of them bad but to answer your question here we're talking about how coffee shops are being able to cope up with this pandemic or in this lockdown because the fact that they're not receiving clients or they're not welcoming clients into their premises it's a very difficult situation for them so the emergence of uh, uh, online deliveries or online companies, talking about Jumia, talking about Kampala Aids, Glovo and more other uh, companies. Mm. On the other hand, it's a good process or it's okay. a good thing because they are being able to give services to our clients who are not able to come to coffee shops. But on the other hand, it's also a bad thing. Mm. How? Just imagine uh, you've been able to come to a coffee shop, uh, you move out of your home, go to a coffee shop, have that experience, have your mind broadened but now these days you wake up at seven on jumia they deliver for you a coffee a cup of coffee you don't know how it has been made you don't know how it has been handled so i'm talking about like food safety because most most of the times at least you get to see what the barista is making how is he making my coffee mm -hmm. eh? a few clients like uh, uh, uh what's his name jennifer is a good client of mine. Whenever we're making his cup of coffee, I have much. You have a number of clients on your table. I mean, on your on your, on your station. She will be able to wait to see you how you're making your cup of coffee because she doesn't want any health complications in mm. her cup of coffee. So such clients, you're giving them a hard time. They don't mm. have a choice, of course, because they can't be able to move to uh, to move from their homes to their uh, to their favorite coffee shops, yeah. and they can't bear bad coffee. You know, mm. like me, I can't bear bad coffee, man. <laughs> I, I can't be able to take any type of coffee anyway. That's why I'm so picky when going to coffee shops. Yeah. You know, so such clients are having hard time to decide whether to stay in this type of new normal whereby delivery companies are delivering foods for them uh, in terms of health, safety, and also in terms of quality. Yeah. Because just imagine if you made your fresh cup of coffee here. Eh? This is a coffee shop. Let's say this is our station, having our coffee break here. And I've, been, I've made my cup fresh. It's even, the, 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 the steam is even coming <laughs> out. I'm like, I can't wait to dive into this cup. Yeah. That's the experience you're having. And now, the delivery company is also delivering this type, this same cup of coffee to you. It's going, first of yes, all, it's yes. going to come when it's cold, maybe. It might you might put it in a flask. Maybe halfway. Maybe some, halfway. Some part, you know, some <laughs> part, You don't know this person who's delivering it to you. Yeah. You don't trust them. So that kind of trust is what we are losing, and it's what uh, coffee shops are trying to cope up with. Yeah. Um, keeping with that new normal. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we've uh, seen from that aspect. Now, technology. Mm -hmm has changed everything mm -hmm. okay and i believe that during this time of lockdown basically during the pandemic pandemic people have had more time to integrate themselves with different kinds of technology mm. okay as simple as google yeah as simple as youtube yeah okay now for me who likes to do certain things by myself yeah. okay now i can't go to the coffee shop anymore all i have to do is basically go to google and type how to make a cup of coffee or i go to youtube and you know uh type how to make a cup of coffee yeah. see now if i can make the coffee by myself yeah. okay uh let's say i can make a french press like we just did here i can mm -hmm. make an aero press okay um does it necessitate me to go back to the coffee shop let me ask you when when you type into google how to make a french press hmm. oh, they show you all the information yeah. and you make it is it the same as the same product you're taking in a coffee shop it, by your favorite barista you know you trust them uh, is it yeah. the same uh, it, it, it might not be as same, the same as uh, made by my trusted barrister, uh -huh. but this one is made by the trusted me. <laughs> no, it's the trusted you, but you know, there is that special touch. Yeah. This person has gone to an institution and studied this. Mm. They are professionals in doing this program. It's mm. like going to a doctor, man, and you're like, I'm feeling some headache, but I don't know what to do. Compared to going on Google and you're like, what should I take when I'm feeling headache? They will give you different various options, but you don't know the best one. So, same applies to uh, these online technologies or technology that has been developed over. Mm. I'll go to Google and type in. Because if that was the case, yeah. I would also have gone to Google before going to school and I'm like, okay, let me teach myself these things. Mm. But I went to an institution, 
and I studied them. I put time. So which means I know what I'm doing compared to going to Google and search. Well, here's the situation. Companies that have uh, online presence yeah. uh, banging it or uh, uh, having it right because mm. these companies have the audience that they can appeal to. Just imagine you have over maybe 100k followers on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. You just have to post your cup of coffee and people are following what you're doing yeah. and you have this person there to direct them. Some companies actually do online uh, things like tutorials. tutorials. Mm. You, you stream it live with your clients, you're making a fresh press for them, they're following the orders, I mean the, 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 the tutorial. So that's a good thing. That's when you have the online presence. presence yeah. But you, who's having maybe 100 followers on Facebook, and you try to um, uh, make a tutorial, mm. and you have two people on, 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 on your Facebook live, my friend, the <laughs> client who's going to come in, in your coffee shop will be like, what you, what you did, on Facebook, oh. and I went and watched that video. I didn't get that. So that's the challenge we are having with technology. And also maybe the other challenge is, uh, I talked about the banks getting into uh, partnership with software companies mm. to uh, at least make sure that uh, uh, payment systems. methods are cleared out. Yeah. Well, some people don't have bank accounts. They have their money on cash on them. Mm. So how do you advise such people? And they're good clients. Mobile and most, money. Eh? I have mobile money. You have, you have mobile money. <laughs> yes. Okay, you have mobile, <laughs> you have mobile money. But also, like, the charges that come with it, yeah. you know? Mm. Some, 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 some charges are very high that you can't even, like, you're buying a cup of coffee maybe at 10,000 and yeah. you end up paying maybe 15,000. That's already an extra charge. Mm. So that's some that's, um, of the challenges. That's yeah, so I like how you've uh, brought the dimension of the extra charge. Mm. See, like I was saying, if uh, if I'm getting to YouTube, okay, and learning how to make a cup of coffee, mm -hmm. or my favorite coffee shop has decided to put uh, their presence online, uh -huh. and let's say every morning they're having a tutorial about this is how you make such and such a cup of coffee, mm -hmm. okay? Now, me who's making it at my place, wouldn't I be spending less per unit? Because let's say I've bought my French press, I've bought my coffee, and I can use it over time. I'm going to the coffee shop to buy something like a cup of coffee, let's say 10,000, 15,000. But you teaching me a tutorial to make it at home, I can make it at, let's say, 5,000. So I think it puts you, the barrister, you, the CEO, in a situation where by now, the only reason I have to come to the coffee shop is to appreciate you as the barrister, to appreciate the time that you put in during your studying. But when it comes to the actual making of coffee, I've gone to YouTube University and you know I've gotten accredited from there so <laughs> you know what, it puts you in a weird situation. See, yeah? Sometimes we just need to take things the way they are hmm. because that's the way they have been and yeah. that's the way they will be. You know, the ro have you seen a videos where robots are making coffee? Yeah. Like it comes, it, it doses its coffee, it hmm. dumps it very well and puts in a machine. Yeah. By the time you're taking uh, to make this, the robot that I'm taking to make that this cup of coffee, mm. it just, it's taking five minutes. But I will take two minutes to make your cup of coffee and a good one. And you're not sure whether the robot is making your good cup of coffee. So, I'm talking about your YouTube university. Mm. Look, I went to school to study the things. Yeah. I got a job, which means I'm being employed. Yeah. Why would you want to take out the job <laughs> I have? <laughs> <laughs> because of YouTube University, <laughs> and I'm able to give you the best product. Mm. But it also goes back to the products, the quality. Because believe me, you, when, when you make yourself something, yeah. and you're not good at it, you've been used to taking something good, the quality will differ to compare, compared to uh, this person who knows what they're making. So it all goes down to the quality of something that you need. Yes, mm. you'll be able to make that cup of coffee, have it, uh, but when you're used to a good quality cup of coffee, yeah. you always come for it in a coffee shop. Yeah, that's interesting. So, uh, in, in respect to the word quality, okay, because I believe that at the, at the end of the day when lockdown is uh, done, mm. some people won't come back to the coffee shops just to have the coffee. Mm. There are certain qualities that they'll be looking for, let's say in a barista, certain uh, qualities that they'll be looking for uh, in, a, in a coffee shop. Mm. So, what are some of these qualities that a barista should have 
and some of these qualities that the coffee shop itself should have that will pull these people back to the coffee shop after lockdown. Well, I think we've mentioned them on the, uh, at the beginning of the show. One, is skills. Mm -hmm. Two, professionalism. And three, knowledge. Mm. That's all you need. Because when you're professional, you know how things are done. Mm. When you have the knowledge, you know how things are done. When you have the skills, you know how things are done. You mm. know how you handle Emma if it comes with a complicated situation. Mm. You know how I will handle uh, a certain client when it comes that they need a certain drink. Mm. So yeah, those are the three main things. Mm. Maybe for the coffee shop, first of all, the setting matters a lot. Yeah. Third, uh, secondly, uh, the pricing. You know, because not every client mm. is able to uh, pay maybe 10k per day. Yeah. So you have to make sure that you have different uh, prices or beverages. The mm. quality, the quantity in pricing, mm. like the, 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 the beverages. For example, you have a French place at 10,000, but you also have an option yeah. of a coffee. You can get at 5,000. Yeah. So those are the, some of the qualities coffee shops should adapt to. Well, I think that, that, that actually puts us uh, in a place where it, it becomes a very... A good uh, topic to talk about, you know, qualities of uh, coffee shop, qualities of barristers and people involved in that process. Well, after the break, we'll be uh, coming back to talk about um, what people can do uh, to get the coffee business back as uh, we go through the lockdown. We'll get back right after this on House of Talent Television. Welcome back from that quick coffee break. This is the Coffee Break Show on House of Talent Television. Remember, you can catch us on YouTube at House of Talent uh, Television Live. You can also catch us on Facebook and on Twitter. Well, today we have been talking about uh, the effect of the lockdown on the coffee business. We have gone through talking about the CEOs, the baristas, 
the farmers. We've talked about different dimensions and different uh, ways that the lockdown has really affected uh, the coffee industry. Well, with me in the studio is Mr. Amon Mukisa. Amon, I was, go I was about to say Coffee Messiah again, but I think we'll leave that for another day. Um, <laughs> as we come to uh, the close of the show, because yeah. uh, we're really out of time, yeah. Uh, what is the way forward? You know, we've been talking about all these effects, and uh, I think most of them are actually negative effects, okay? They're going to affect uh, employment. They're going to affect numbers that are coming to the coffee shops, you know, the quality uh, of service and all these things, the interpersonal relationships with the clientele, okay? So from your perspective, as a barista and, you know, someone who works in a coffee shop, what is the way forward? Okay, how will we get people back into the coffee shops and how shall we get business back uh, running? Well, uh, one thing for sure we need to do, uh, most coffee shops are not operating. Mm. That's the fact. The few coffee shops that are operating have their ground, like they've been in existence for forever, 10 years, 15 years, 13 years. So at least they have the capacity of holding the business standing for more than even five years where they're not like making proper sales. Yeah. But there are certain coffee shops that have, have just opened up. Certain coffee shops that have been in operation, but they can't be able to hold them each other strong to live or to uh, hold the business side of it. So here's the advice that I give you. Make sure that your uh, health uh, points are very clear. I'm talking about the uh, pesticides because now you've been closed and you have your machines, you have your equipments in there, yeah. which means they're going to get uh, certain pest, uh, pest cockroaches. Mm, they have, they have to know. spray. Yes, they have to spray. Yeah. Make sure that your machines are very safe. Mm -hmm. Secondly, hold your ground. Keep in two uh, the faces of people, you know, like at least once in a while. Show us that you're still there. One place, I was having a conversation with a friend and he told me, this shop, I won't mention the name, this shop should not have closed. You know mm. what? It had just started, so it had to keep into the faces of people mm. for purposes of branding. Yeah. So, at least once in a while, keep into the faces of people. This will show that you're still open, you're not closed for good. You know? And also, keep checking on your employees because you need to show them that uh, you're caring about them. It's not only um, always about money, yeah. it's also always about humanity. Mm. Uh, check on them. How are they doing? Once in a while, send them some curtain care to live. Because, <laughs> man, people are living in a yeah, bad they, situation. They that that true, true, true. Over a month without working, you have rent bills, you have to take care of your parents, you, maybe you're married and you have children, but you spent a month without working. Yeah. So the a coffee shop owners should check out these people so mm. that they show that they had uh, uh, about okay they care about them yeah, yeah. Uh, before we go off mm. two other uh, aspects one i believe that there's someone out there before the lockdown who wanted to start you know a coffee shop or wanted to enter the coffee business but now they're uncertain because we don't know whether there's going to be lockdown how far the pandemic is going so i want you to look into the camera and from your perspective, give advice to that person who had almost started but stopped. Should they go on with the idea to enter the coffee business or they, should they hold off and wait to see what happens? Well, to you, I, I just want to say to you that the idea never dies. It belongs to you. So you need to find a way of how well you can package it, you know. Uh, if you have your idea and you know it was going to be well implemented, stay with your idea. Make sure that you implement it after the lockdown, even after the pandemic, because believe me, things are going to be much better after this pandemic. Yeah, and yeah. lastly, I just want you to look into the camera. I believe that there are certain clients of yours, or there's that one particular client mm -hmm. who will follow you no matter where you go, yeah. okay? <laughs> and they haven't seen you in a while, mm -hmm. and if the lockdown is lifted, they'll be coming back to the uh, to the coffee shop. I want you to look into the camera mm -hmm. and tell them why they should come back. <laughs> Well, why well, you should come back first, we miss you in our coffee shops, we miss that experience. But secondly, we want you to have the best coffee, you know? We want you to have the best products that you're taking in because this is food and beverages that we are handling. Or we're talking about something that can complicate your life. So we want you to have the best of the best in your health body system. 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, the Kofi Messiah has said it himself. We want you to have the best of the best. And on House of Talent Television, we want you to have the best of the best of everything. This was the Kofi uh, Break Show with me, Atengi Manuel, and uh, Amon Mukisa in the studio. Catch us again next time on House of Talent Television on all our social media platforms. Have a beautiful day, a beautiful morning, beautiful afternoon, or a good night wherever you're watching this from. Thank you. at the moment mm. are, are struggling to understand the older generation because mm. times have changed. Technology has come in. They've moved on. Yes. We're the ones sitting back and wondering what is my child on to? TikTok has surpassed what's yap. Mm -hmm. The other one I call uh, I, I never call it Facebook. It's Bookface. <laughs> Why are you on Bookface? <laughs> Dad, it's Facebook. Yes, yes. Me, I keep saying yeah. I have a foot amongst the millennials. Yeah. And I understand the traditionalists. Okay. There's a song in the 60s, by the way, and yeah. then in the 90s, 70s, where they're like, parents don't understand. Yes. Ah, remember Prince? Yes. It's a CEO bench, so usually people want to assume that all CEOs are over learned and stuff like that. So I will, <laughs> I will change the script this time around. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I consider myself a certified hustler. If I'm looking to know who you are, are you Ugandan? If yes, what are the values that define you as Ugandan? <sighs> That's the easiest question, I think, to answer. I am a typical Lao man from a route north yeah. in a place called Ogur, and where I will be laid to rest is in a village called Agweng. Yeah. So if you go there and you just say Otoa Tony, they won't really know me because my father is also Otoa Tony. <laughs> you have to ask for Junior. And when you're asking, you have to ask with an accent. Yeah. Junior Tikwene. Yeah. Where is Junior? <laughs> and they will, they will identify me. But I am I'm typically Ugandan, only yeah. Ugandan, yeah. Uh, from Lira. I pride myself from being uh, from Lira. I, earlier on, I, I was joking and saying I'm the coolest lago yeah, yeah. south of Karuma. <laughs> when you cross Karuma, there are so many. Yeah, yeah, but when yeah. you're down the south, south. after Karuma, oh, 
I think I, I'm number one. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, now that you know, Tonyo Toa is Ugandan, and of course, what are the values that define you as a Ugandan? Um, I think it's the love for country, uh, love for nation. You know, truth be told, the country is in a lot of, it's a crisis. Leadership crisis, economic crisis, social crisis. There's so many mismatching areas. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's home. You know, you cannot run and abandon your home because of the issues in your home. I think that then creates an opportunity for you to do something to change what's happening and what you see as a crisis. So in terms of what I see as a, a value, what I take out of that for me, I think is just the, the love for country, the, the need to serve country the best way I can. And I mean, I can't say I, I can change everything, but the little I can do to create a difference, I think is more meaningful. Wow. Yeah. Mr. Tony Otoa, growing up, what did you want to be in life? And uh, what was the journey like for Mr. Otoa? Yeah, you know, my father, my father is crazy. My father would call us and she would show me the compass. The idea was supposed to be a pilot. Yeah. You know, the planes <laughs> would fly over our house yeah. and uh, my father would be like, yeah, you're going to be a pilot. Yeah. But of course, as you grow, you realize that you have so many things that really define you. I was yeah. never a sportsman. So I enjoyed a lot of debate and, you know, a lot of indoor activities. And that is, I think, what really drove me into some of the things that I do up to today. Uh, public speaking, the love for debates and, 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 and really a lot of intellectual discourse and all this stuff. But besides that, I think 